Okay, so we're back on the power supply, the never-ending power supply, um, which is okay. It's a it's a fun project. It's teaching me a lot. Um, here you can see what we attempted to do. Um, we're trying to tig the uh, the heat distributor portion of the heat sink to the the main heat sink here and um, so I'm learning TIG so this is difficult um, I didn't know about preheat I didn't know that was a thing and you're trying to put heat into a heat sink so good luck with that um, if if you think you can weld a heat sink well think again it's pretty damn hard and uh, I can only go up to 200 amps and my my TIG head is not water cooled so um, yeah my hand was pretty much on fire trying to do this um, but uh, hey if you want to weld stuff on the heat sinks go for it uh, I'm gonna opt out because uh, I learned my lesson on this one. It's it's got a slight warp to it. You can't really see it from here, but it's it's got a slight warp to it just from the heat. I'm I'm not sure. I think the heat sink's warped a little bit too. So, you know, you put 500 degrees into a piece of aluminum, it's going to distort. It's not that it's super critical, but we do want the transistors as flat as possible to the the heat sinks so that they maintain the majority of their their case to uh, to the the heat sink for thermal contact. I did this because I wanted intimate contact between the two pieces of aluminum, and sure enough, they've got intimate contact. Believe me, they've got plenty of contact here. But um, this is uh, and this was the cheap version because the uh, the angle pieces are they get kind of pricey. So we were trying to cut some corners and, and uh, play with our, our new welding toy and, and we imagined it would come out nicer than it actually did. It'll work, but you see my weld is kind of drifting all over the place and it looks like shit because I'm learning. I, I haven't taken a welding class yet, but I'm going to keep practicing. Just not on something that's three eighths of an inch thick on a hobby level welding machine. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's a good machine, but I'm a bad welder, so those two, they don't mix very well. So we changed gears and we upgraded the heat sink to something that's going to be more substantial, something that's going to be more appropriate for this kind of a job. And so in doing so, I had to modify the TO3 transistor um, spacing jig so that I could drill the holes out and we did that we did that um, uh, yesterday so I got the hole pattern here right and then the uh, the index hole and um, so we went along each one and indexed it through and it comes out really nice when you when you do that they're all they're all spaced and they're all maybe not straight but they're all at the same angle whatever angle they're at what have you uh, so we spent some time drilling and tapping and putting in all our little holes for this this mammoth heat sink is pretty big. See, it's pretty big. So we have nine transistors on each paddle, and they're not fully populated right now because we still have a lot of work to do. I have to put the pins in, pins, for the circuit boards, because the circuit boards need to be located uh, by a pin so that we can do the hole transfers 
because we're not going to have any way to really mount the circuit board to this other than a, a C-clamp. But the trouble with this is it's a floating design. We're not going to use sockets on this because sockets are going to provide too much uh, contact loss and it's going to be an inferior inferior connection. So from here what we're going to do is we're going to go transistor straight into socket receptacles, board mount socket receptacles. And um, those are rated for 8 amps each. And each one of these transistors is only going to be carrying 3 amps. So, um, 3 amps maximum, theoretically. So that gives us 27 amps per paddle. But we're really shooting for 25 amps. So we'll see how that goes. So it'll go transistor into a, a cup socket connector into the board. And the collector, that will be just the screw making contact to the board. And that'll be sufficient for 3 amps. But it cannot touch this plate and that's why we need the pins. The pins will locate the board and keep it in place so that the screw won't arc to the paddle. Now we could use little Teflon uh, washers in there too in the future if we want to do that. It's not necessary but it's a good practice to do something like that in order to prevent any haphazard uh, situation where that would arc. So the next step here is to basically guesstimate where the locator pins are going to be and I would say it's probably a quarter inch by quarter inch right there and right there quarter inch by quarter inch it's not real critical I get to decide where the pins go. This this whole thing is kind of a guessing game you kind of just um, bumble your way through it because there's there's no design there's no blueprint for this I'm making it up as I go along and if it works it works if it doesn't work well then it doesn't work I don't worry about it so we're just gonna do what we're gonna do and hopefully it works so the next step is to put put my four holes in and we don't install the pins just yet or do we no I think I need to leave the pins out so that I can drill holes I need to leave the pins out so this acts as a drill guide into the circuit board so we'll drill the holes but we'll leave the we'll leave the pins out and uh, these, these pins are pretty easy to, to knock in and knock out. You just smack them with a hammer a couple times, they go right in. So that'll be the next phase, is locating uh, the holes for the pins and just leaving the holes empty. And then after that, it'll be circuit board work. And then... Um, uh, locating the holes for the contacts and then it'll be layout time but uh, I think we're going to take a break from this for the minute and because we made a lot of good progress and I like to take a break after I make progress as a little reward so we're going to go and uh, see if there's anything else to take care of in the interim so that's it for the moment